Hi, my dear Astro family. Today, I wanted to speak about the, the upcoming lunar eclipse, which is going to be taking place on the 15th or the 16th of May, depending on where you are. So a couple of things which we are going to be talking about in this uh, video, because this is a, a full on, you know, it's a full on kind of a uh, full moon, total lunar eclipse. So I wanted to actually pack it with loads of information. One thing which we are going to be talking about is the apogee and the perigee. What does it mean in astrology and then uh, uh, how we can actually work with them? Also, we are going to be talking about uh, the Taurus and the uh, Scorpio axis. We are going to be talking about the Neptune-Mars conjunction, as well as Saturn and Vesta conjunction. We are going to be looking at why there is a, a financial crisis going on at the moment. And uh, probably I'm going to be making a separate video of that anyway. Also, there is some uh, aspect shape which uh, are unfolding here, and one of them is a T-square. And uh, we have got a crater going on in the chart also. We are going to be actually looking at a little bit the watch chart because I think uh, that is going to be explaining why there is a financial crisis, which, by the way, I know some of you might be saying that, oh, it's easier to talk about it once uh, the financial crisis happened. Actually, I did predict, uh, I think it was with the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction video, there is going to be a financial crash happening in the first week of uh, May. Well, it happened in the second week, so I kind of missed a week here. But um, uh, anyway, I'm not going to justify why I thought in the first week was going to be a, a crisis. But I did recommend it to many of my clients as well. Get rid of your money at the end of the month of April, by the way. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the cradle and the T-square, which I think it's very exciting. And also, I wanted to talk about the world axis a little bit, because Uranus is actually semi-squaring the world axis. And of course, Jupiter is right on the uh, uh, world axis, which is the Aries and the Libra axis. So we've got loads to cover here. So I recommend staying till the very end. By the way, I will be making a webinar this weekend about your chart ruler and how to work with your chart ruler. This is going to be happening on Saturday and at 4 p.m. Uh, Istanbul, Turkey time. So if you are interested in that, check it out. And next week, I am actually doing uh, one about the 10 worst synastry aspect. And that's going to be my opinion, by the way. But we are going to be focusing a little bit on the relationship department. And I think there is no better time, time doing that than actually around the total lunar eclipse, which is something to do with relationships anyway, to a certain extent. So let's get started. So around the 15th or the 16th, depending on where you are, there is a full moon total lunar eclipse. Now, a total lunar eclipse um, uh, happens typically when the moon or the sun are extremely close to the north node or the south node. Typically, this would be a case when it's within about three degree. Now, that's the situation at the moment. Uh, a, uh, a total lunar eclipse happens when the Earth is directly between the Sun and the Moon. So what it what happens is that somehow the Earth is blocking out the communication between Sun and the Moon, but also those two luminaries are kind of shedding light onto the Earth as well. So it's kind of like become a little bit more visible to the outside world as well. Uh, when we are talking about the sun, because the full moon always happens when the sun and the moon are in opposition, the sun is about light and exposure, and the, the lunar energy is very much about the truth uh, and something to do with a hidden truth uh, in Scorpio, but also something to do with gaining a little bit of a clarity as well. Now, this uh, eclipse is called as a flower moon, well, there is a little bit of a celebration here of the Taurian springtime when the flowers start blossoming and all those type of things. 
But actually, this eclipse is also a super blood moon as well. Now, the super is actually referring to the moon being uh, very proximate to, towards the Earth. So there are two ways of, to go about this. We've got the apogee and the perigee. Both of them refers to the distance from the Earth to the moon. Apogee is the farthest point from the Earth, and perigee is the closest point to the Earth. And uh, it is in this stage that the moon appears actually huge and large. Now, looking at the moon in the sky, without kind of trying to compare it to anything, it would be quite hard to notice any type of size, uh, size differences. But the difference in size can be quite significant, even though you don't necessarily light it, uh, see it. So the apogee is the furthest from the Earth, point of the moon's orbit and the perigee is the closest point. So um, the orbit of the moon around the earth actually isn't circular. Uh, it's elliptic. And the, when moon is in perigee, uh, that's why it's kind of like noticeably closer to the earth and looks bigger. Now, when there is a perigee happening, typically severe events occur within a few days before of the perigee or after the perigee. So typically, uh, three days before the eclipse or three days after the eclipse, there is usually a very severe event happening. Now, uh, Asian people used to say that perigee is extremely good for fishing, for instance. Um, actually, Studies show that students seem to be doing a lot better in exams when the moon is in perigee. Uh, uh, also, uh, some astrological research, research shows that the first quarter moon coincides with the perigee, then a hurricane are very possible, actually. And then when the summer full moon is in perigee or apogee, then it typically brings very hot weather. The super moon always refers to a new moon or a full moon that occurs on or very near to the point of the moon's orbit that's closest to Earth. And that's what we call as lunar perigee. Uh, also, scientists say that uh, following the super moon by a day or two, the Earth oceans feel this extra pull of the supermoons and therefore the tides tend to be quite high and the tides plunge extremely low as well at the same time and to be frank i would not be shocked why because it's uh, happening in the sign of a scorpio which is the sign of extremes anyway now, other thing which is important to kind of mention here that uh, the most potent supermoons occur in a very tight alignment with Priapus and Black Moon Lilith. Um, they signify, uh, signify a time of great desire and, uh, and we want everything kind of with, with it, but it's also indication of frustration, greed, uh, competition, um, there is always a risk of being controlled by that desire what we have. There is kind of like a lust after whatever we desire or pursue, and we don't necessarily look at the consequences. Whether we are talking about food, drink, or another person, or social status, or object, or experience, it doesn't really matter, but we always have got that going on. Now, Black Moon Leaf and Priapus are not planets. They are actually mathematical points between the Earth and the lunar perigee. And the lunar perigee is actually the Priapus, okay? And the apogee is actually Lilith. Uh, we can look at them as kind of like dark cosmic voids, kind of like very sensitive points in the horoscope. Typically, they are actually opposing one to another. So wherever Lilith is, then um, the, opposite would, this, the opposite sign would be the Priapus. So let's just make it a little bit more understandable. If the sun and moon in your chart are in a tight opposition, 
then you were born on a full moon. If the sun is conjunct black moon Lilith within about 10 degree orb, then you were born on a full super moon. Okay, and that's where this apogee and uh, perigee is coming into the picture. Okay, if the sun and the moon are closely conjunct in your birth chart, then you were born on a new moon. If black moon Lilith opposes your sun and moon conjunction within 10 degree orb, then you were born on a super new moon. And the closest the aspect, the more power you will feel this super moon. The moon actually tends to be the fastest in perigee and the slowest in apogee. Basically, the black moon Lilith is the apogee of the moon. Whenever the moon is in apogee in the natal chart, it is in fact in conjunction with Lilith. And this tend to be actually kind of demolishing the moon's power according to ancient people. I hope it makes sense what apogee and uh, perigee is, but this is the type of moon we are having at the moment. Okay, so let's dive into this uh, meaning of, uh, of this uh, lunar eclipse. So it's happening on 25 degree of Scorpio. Moon is in it, actually it's in fall position. So that makes it a little bit difficult. The other side of it is that this is going to be falling onto the Virgo and the Pisces Dwad. So the moon is on Virgo Dwad and uh, the sun is on Pisces Dwad, which is the axis of sacrifice. Uh, now, this total lunar eclipse will be visible in the eastern half of the United States and Canada, most of Central America and all of South Africa. So those countries might be a little bit more uh, impacted by this uh, lunar eclipse, but I kind of believe that it's going to be affecting the world mainly, I mean, the whole world. So I feel like this full moon, which is a little bit kind of distressed, also comes with plenty of losses and sacrifices to be made as well. It has got some very prominent aspects going on because it's, it's a, a very exact square to Saturn and Vesta conjunction. And yes, we've got a trine from Neptune and Mars as well at the same time. So a Scorpio full moon is always about release or making an element of an adjustment. It's spotlighting something also within us. So it requires you to go through a personal transformation, look at what death and rebirth actually mean to you. And here I would like to mention that it's not necessarily about being afraid that we are going to be dying or we are going to be losing someone. However, unfortunately, that could also be the case for some of us. But more likely, this is about what am I going to be leaving behind, giving up on, and that's the uh, Pisces word of that moon. And I'm going to be transforming all the emotions as well within me. And that's where the death and rebirth kind of process comes into the picture. Scorpio full moon always invites us to, to do shadow work within us. Maybe we need to reach out to some awkward uh, teachers or gurus to do that. Maybe we're going to have to be focusing a little bit more on intimacy and connections to others. But those type of connections, which also has got to be of a meaning as well. And yes, it could really talk about the insurance, taxes and inheritance or anything to do with sharing and caring towards others are also in the picture of this uh, Scorpio full moon. So this uh, full moon is actually creating a T-square, which is uh, um, containing the moon, sun, the lunar nodes and also Vesta and Saturn as well. So... Now, what I kind of feel like is Vesta, firstly, is about a higher cause. So this is going to be asking you whether you have been stuck in a situation and you are too dedicated to something. And maybe you're going to have to be learning to be more patient or systematic about it. By the way, this, all, this started... Uh, uh, sometimes at the beginning of um, 
uh, May, sometimes around the 4th, 3rd of May, when it kind of started being within orb. And then it's it's peaked on the 14th of May, and then it's going to kind of break off around the 24th of May. So this is almost a month transit, what we actually need to be looking at. Now, Vesta here is about devotion, dedication, which might be outdated already. And we go, we're going to have to kind of release that. That's where the Scorpio full moon comes into the picture. Uh, Vesta wants to serve a greater good. It, it sometimes has got also a, a, a concern to gain something as well at the same time. Vesta is something to do with investment also, investment asteroid. Most probably this is one of the reasons why the Saturn and Vesta conjunction caused a little bit of a turmoil in the investment department. And then we are peaking now towards this uh, lunar eclipse, which is going to be intensifying certain type of things. So Saturn and Vesta together is about being systematic, being dedicated to a long-term goal, not necessarily giving up on something. And because Sun is also in the sign of Taurus, again, uh, the stubbornness is coming into the picture. So this is a fixed T-square, which is really much about stubbornness, getting out of a situation, feeling stuck in certain type of things. So you might need to be looking at uh, the world or yourself a little bit that there is something which has outgrown itself. And maybe you're going to have to kind of move on because Sun Saturn and Vesta are in the sign of Aquarius, which is advancement. So how are you going to be moving forward or how are you going to be putting your own um, tweak on something? Saturn and Vesta can really talk about your mission in life too, which you are very devoted to. Is that the right mission? Does that give me enough money as well at the same time? Because uh, this is about financial support, what uh, the lunar eclipse really bring, brings us. And because we have got this Saturn and Vesta in the sign of Aquarius, that also represents a little bit of a breakthrough. Uh, breakthrough, how to make money or how to lose money as well at the same time. Now, one other interesting thing which I wanted to share here with you is that I looked at the Dwarch chart. If someone does not know what Dwarch is, then, uh, then uh, I have a webinar about it as well as I have got a, a, a little bit of an introductionary uh, video on my YouTube channel. You might want to ch uh, check that out. But Saturn he, at the moment of the lunation is on 29 degree of Scorpio in the Dwarf's chart. So I think it was really testing the financial market. And I looked at when it started and it started, the 29 degree element started uh, on the 10th of May. Now, how interesting that that's exactly when the kind of like the crisis situation also kind of kicked in because 29 degree of Scorpio is testing the financial world a little bit. Now, in a week time, it will move into Sagittarius by the word, okay? So I think the financial market should be easing up a little bit. Is it going to go back to record heights? I don't think so. But I think it's going to ease up a little bit. Now, also, we've got a cradle going on in this lunar eclipse chart, and it contains the luminaries, also Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. So now, cradle, uh, maybe uh, to speak about that for a little bit. Cradle, we all know how a cradle looks like, so probably I don't necessarily need to kind of uh, talk about that, but the cradle comes or brings in an element of nurturing, a little bit of a parental figure. Figure, It could indicate that uh, it's kind of like a helplessness energy. It's like a baby which needs to be looked after all the time, right? So in a sense, uh, something which we need to kind of look after, and because Mars is uh, the focal point here, and Mars being in Pisces, 
in a tight conjunction to Neptune. So I feel like it's very much about looking after your own dreams. Mars is an action planet, right? So we're going to have to take actions on our dreams and on our vision. Probably trusting your intuition, I, I'm not too sure about that, just because the moon is near by south node. And sometimes it's a little bit too spiritual. So there needs to be a balance here of reality as well as your dreams. Also, Mars and Neptune, I feel like, is a very creative energy. It's very good at visualization. But also, because Vesta is in the picture, Mars is in the picture, and Mars rules the, this uh, lunar eclipse. Let's not forget about that, too. So it brings in something to do with uh, sexuality as well at the same time. Now, whether we are talking about things such as Kind of like with the Vesta, which is also a, a virgin type of archetype. It really talks about getting in touch with your deepest desire when it comes to any type of sexual uh, elements too. It could really talk about dream interpretations or how to go with the flow a little bit more. And Pluto is being sextiled by Mars uh, as well at the same time. So... And Pluto is about power. So how to get my power back? And it could be talking about, you know, or how to release some of my fears around it. So I feel like this lunar eclipse is an awakening of your life purpose overall. Yes, it could really talk about some irritations, what people go through, because Moon is unfortunately in a detrimental position. It's also depleted by uh, being close to the south node. So it's draining the energy out of people. So we looked at already the, the Scorpio's archetype. But we also need to be looking at the Taurus archetype as well at the same time. Because Sun and Moon are opposition. And that's where the balance needs to be. And Taurus is about money and possessions. Something which you can control. But it's also about persistence and getting stuck. Yeah, it rules your five senses and the nature and the food industry, you know, and uh, surely. So some of the, uh, the, the themes I think it really brings up in the world and on a deeper level as well as an individual is that how you are controlling certain type of things, how you, you are looking after your financials, for instance, who are the rich and who are the poor? Uh, what is your comfort zone, which sometimes might be a danger this time around? And how I'm going to take that to the next level, Scorpio, the transforming that. And it really talks about what I like doing, what I'm kind of passionate about, or something to do with our sensual side as well. And it could really bring in topics around kind of like merging two bodies and also your spiritual and your material possessions overall. And this eclipse, because it's a super full moon, it's going to be lasting for definitely six months. It's going to be around. Another thing which I've seen is that the moon is actually on a fixed star called Agena, which is on 24 degree of Scorpio. And uh, Agena is actually, if we translated the world, it means to be in the present. And also, it also means the knee. So I think it's kind of like showing, again, a fall of something, kind of like falling down from a tree and falling on your knee. But also, it might uh, talk about that kneeing down in front of the present, rather than living in, the, living in the past. Because Scorpio Moon, in many cases, are connected to past life emotional traumas <coughs> or an earlier experience, basically. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be um, uh, a past life, though. So it could be a chaotic and turbulent, turbulent period of time. I think the self not indicates there that there should be a non-attachment towards something. 
and gonna have to let go of something which doesn't serve us anymore. So look at where the Scorpio part of your chart is and you might get a little bit clearer idea about that. And um, it could uh, talk about the removal of all emotional stuff within us because Scorpio is about detoxication. We have got so much water energy going on. Lunar eclipse, the moon is, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Mars is with Neptune in the sign of Pisces. So what could really happen here is that you get flooded with your emotions. The emotions are coming to the surface. You become overwhelmed and then you don't see things clearly. Uh, so staying grounded, I think, is an important thing here to mention. Yes, you can do a, a little bit of a water therapy, you know, like a salt bath or having shower a little bit more often or water bath or, you know, whatever, or swimming in the ocean, walking in the ocean and stuff like that. But what I'm really uh, experiencing with this lunar eclipse is that it's kind of like a muddy situation, being stuck in the mud, and then we're going to have to get out of that. By the way, the Mars and the Neptune aspect will be exact on the 18th of May. I tend to call um, Scorpio as the toilet. And that toilet needs to be cleaned, but also you're going to have to sit down on the toilet. Or you're going to be stuffing yourself with loads of food, and then, uh, you know, your bowel movements get working, in a sense. So the Scorpio and the Piscean energy for me is loads about uh, letting go, loads of endings. So, by the way, the fixed star I mentioned before, Agena, uh, uh, Ptolemy said if it connects with the moon, it's about sarcasm and being bitter and also being extremely passionate about something. Now, another thing which I find very interesting, and I wanted to touch base on that a little bit, Uranus has hit 15 degree of Taurus. So it's in an exact semi-square, a 45 degree aspect to the world axis. The world axis is the zero degree of Aries, zero degree of Libra. And Jupiter just hit that too. And these are pivotal moments in the world. The very next one, which is going to be happening, is going to be uh, in 2026, when Saturn and Neptune will be having a conjunction on zero degree. So some of the shadow side of the Jupiter and Uranus kind of cycle uh, is very much about going too far, uh, stretching as much as you kind of want, and then all of a sudden there is uh, an element of a loss involved there because we were too, let's say, technologically greedy. So this is the other reason why I think, unfortunately, uh, this uh, financial crash happened. Also, it could talk about impatience. It could talk about that we kind of got into a process of rebirth, but we kind of didn't, uh, didn't uh, make it or it wasn't complete fully. It could really talk about attention deficits and then you get kind of distracted. It could really talk about over uh, optimism and uh, believing in something which sometimes we shouldn't be. It could talk about a Jesus Christ complex really, or kind of graving for a, an ultimate breakthrough, such as I'm gonna be a millionaire and all those type of things. Jupiter and uh, Uranus is actually a millionaire's combo, by the way. Uh, it could talk about that, you know what, no one can tell me what, um, uh, you know, no one can talk to me because I'm a genius anyway. Uh, it could really talk about having a strong urge to be freedom, uh, to, to be free, sorry. And, uh, and uh, it could also talk about that I am not willing to kind of follow any type of rules and structures or I don't want to be committed either. These are some of the shadow sides. Now, of course, we've got the Jupiter and the, the Uranus as a positive as well. And it could really talk about openings and opportunities. 
it could really talk about uh, feeling lively. It could talk about a breakthrough, kind of like, oh, yes, you know, something, uh, uh, kind of like a thunderstorm is hitting your head and then you have got this great idea. It could really talk about uh, achieving actually your freedom. It could talk about actually gaining a little bit of a, a, an optimism overall. Or you might want to be sharing your own light or you become liberated somehow. Or you all of a sudden gain a little bit of a success story somehow. So, of course, because it's a semi-square, uh, we're going to have to make efforts to kind of, you know, have that breakthrough. It's actually very important here. So, one thing I wanted to kind of share here in a very brief moment, I don't think cryptocurrency at the moment kind of has been killed. Um, but I think it's going to start building up probably after the 20th of May. So, I mean, slowly, but I think it's going to uh, scrape back up. Um, so that, but I'm going to, I think, make a little bit more of an intense video about this just to give uh, clarity and a little bit more digging here also. So this is uh, uh, my interpretation on the lunar eclipse. Don't forget to go and check out my two upcoming little uh, presentation on chart ruler and the worst uh, synastry aspects. See you soon. Bye-bye.